Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and you join me today up the top of the garden at the um, big herbaceous borders and so those of you that have watched the channel will know that I've been struggling just to get the planting right in these um, borders and I just don't want to do it wrong again and I just lack a bit of confidence to to just really get it right. I know I know the look I want but I just was struggling a little bit with how to actually get there. Now I've been following um, a YouTube channel Rosie Hardy Gardening. Um, for those of you that don't know Rosie, Rosie is a Vice President of the RHS. She's a winner of 24 gold medals at Chelsea. She really knows her stuff and she's owner of Hardy Cottage Garden Plants. So Rosie, um, I asked Rosie if she would help me, give me some advice on what to do in these borders. So I'm going to just play now the video that I sent her back in January, I think it was. And then if you head over to her channel, the video will be released on the 12th of March. So make sure you go over and look at the, the video, Rosie's reply to my questions, um, quite a lot of questions <laughs> admittedly. But Rosie replies really well, really concisely, um, just cuts through all the problems and just lets me know what to do in a really clear format. And I think it's not just me that she will help with this. I think lots of you will benefit from her really, really good advice. So. Without further ado, this is the question that I posed to her. Hello, my name is Jenny from the Garden YouTube channel Murphy's Garden and I regularly watch Rosie's channel and find her expertise is so beneficial in helping me to improve the planting in my own garden. Our garden is in North Shropshire and is about an acre in size. We've divided it up into lots of different garden rooms and one of the areas, this area here where I am, consists of um, two large perennial borders and it's in these borders that I'm having a real problem getting the planting right. As you can see, we're doing a big redesign in this area and we've added um, water, we've added a rill up the middle. Um, we haven't finished it, we've literally just dug the hole, but we've had lots of rain in the last day or two, so it has actually filled up with water so you can get a feel for what it's going to look like, but we've got a lot more work still to do here. But as part of that um, redesign, I do want to revisit the planting in these big borders. I did a video in the autumn in which I sort of was editing the borders and trying to make changes and I had a lot of comments from other people who were struggling with similar issues to me. So for this reason I contacted Rosie who is the queen of perennials to get some expert advice. Um, I just really want to know how to improve perennial borders so that they perform better and for longer and th you know throughout the whole season and hopefully this advice will be beneficial to not just me but other gardeners watching too. So the first thing that obviously Rosie needs to know is the site. So we'll just discuss the site that's here. The borders measure three metres in width by 14.5 metres. So they're quite large, I suppose. They're south facing and are surrounded by a small beech hedge. Um, we've put the beech hedge in just to shelter this, um, these borders from the wind. They've also got a box hedge which just runs around the side and the front. The box hedging is looking a little bit dodgy after the winter that we've had uh, and the summer that we've had a very wet year. So there is a little bit of blight so whether they, they will stay in the long term I'm not quite sure. Um, the height of the beech hedge is about one and a half metres or about five foot and width is about a metre or about three foot four inches um, and we do maintain that hedge so we won't allow it to get any bigger than that. In fact it might not even be five foot, it's maybe more like four and a half. So we will keep it at that, we won't allow it to get any bigger. The borders currently have three um, wooden obelisks and I have Olivia Rose, a David Austin Rose called Olivia Rose um, growing up those. They're fairly newly planted, they haven't really, they've just started to get going but if they're not right for the border I'm not, I don't mind moving them if necessary. I have three Steepa Gigantia planted in each of the borders and they're quite front of border. Um, there was a bit of a problem, we put, I put them in first and the middle one when the obelisk went in the obelisk had to sit right behind the steeper and I don't really know whether that looks right or not. Um, the steepers look beautiful when they're lit by the sort of evening or the morning sun and they really stand out and look lovely but again if there was a better grass or a different grass that Rosie recommended I'm not precious with anything, I'm happy to have a, a big change. And the rest of the borders are just filled with um, perennials, which I'll go through in a minute. But I just want to say that the, um, I'm happy to take everything out and start again. 
or work with what I've got. I don't know really what to do. So um, yeah, Rosie, if you've got any advice. Although I've got some nice perennials, one of the things I think is a problem is that some of the perennials I've got may not be the best variety. So I'm keen to get advice on ones that are stronger performers. For example, I've got Echinacea purpurea, which every year just collapses. It just it always very disappointing. Um, and I know from watching Rosie's channel that there are a lot of better um, echinaceas that I could go for. We're on very sandy soil, very free draining soil. Um, however, we are producing a lot of garden compost and I've now got into the routine for the last sort of three years. I've been mulching these borders every year with our compost. I love perennial plants. I understand the work that's involved from cutting back to splitting and I'm not necessarily look, looking for a low maintenance garden. I enjoy gardening and I'm happy to put the work in. So the problem as I see it, um, to get a good display in the spring, I planted purple sensation alliums, um, Camassia lecklinii alba along with aquilegia, uh, verbascums, lupins, delphiniums, uh, oriental poppies, all those kind of things. And in the spring, in May um, and into early June, these borders look beautiful. They really do look lots, look lovely. However, what happens is the camassias go over and everything goes over at the same time and the garden, the, the borders look really, really bad. The camassias look very untidy when they go over and um, it's a lot of work actually getting rid of all the foliage and try not to stand on other things as they emerge through. So I'm not really sure whether there's a mistake planting camassia bulbs in these borders. Um, I have removed some of them, but it's always a bit alarming in the spring when thousands of little green shoots come up and I know that they're all camassias and I'm a bit concerned whether they're affecting perhaps the vigor of other plants, I'm not sure. The verbascum again look lovely when they come through, but then they get covered in caterpillars and they all get eaten. They do come back again later in the year. By July, these borders look really bad. There are big gaps as lots of the early summer plants have finished flowering and the late plants just haven't got going. So unlike my other perennial borders nearer the house, which feature kind of smaller, daintier plants, and they make a great kind of picking garden. These borders are seen from further away. And so the cottage garden style used elsewhere just doesn't work in these borders. I think I need bigger, larger clumps and less plants and sort of to repeat the same plants again and again. However, what I'm struggling with, I need to ensure that whatever plants I choose, they must have a long season of interest as I don't want these big gaps when things go over. So when these borders were first um, cut out, I was quite daunted and um, I just, I didn't have a large budget. So I just bought lots of small plug plants. I did plan it all out and I put these plug plants in, but over time, some sort of disappeared and just didn't get going and others kind of took over. And so where there were gaps, I bought more plants and just kind of filled them in, shoved them in, um, got given plants, shoved them in. And as a result, the borders now contain Achillea, Sedum, Helenium, Eupatorium, Hydrangea, Rebeccae, Dahlias, Verbena, Lupins, Salvia, Liastra, Delphiniums, Verbascum, Phlox, Monarda, Campanulas, and Echinacea, and probably more that I haven't thought of. It's only when I listed them all out, I realise I've got far too much in these borders. And the result is that the borders are chaotic and a bit of a riot, really. I can't say I, I don't really enjoy gardening in these borders as I do elsewhere, as they're just so complicated and difficult to keep on top of. So I'd like to be able to plant um, clumps and mulch around them to suppress the weeds and feel a little bit more in control. I also love plants that have a really good seed head and look good over the winter months. And um, so I like to leave the seed heads in place and they often look good um, you know, throughout the winter months. Our garden is incredibly windy and you'll see from the um, steeper, which normally look, still look quite nice at this time of year, all the flower heads have been broken because the garden is very, very windy and it's been particularly windy this, um, this winter. Um, I currently have to stake a lot of the plants, but if, if we can possibly choose plants that don't require staking, then that would be even better. So as I said, I did have a go at making revisions to the borders in autumn and I removed a rather muddy looking phlox called Sherbet Cocktail, which had run riot all over the far side of the border and looked really bad. 
and I split and tried to make bigger clumps of the plants I love, such as Heleniums, Rebecca, Eupatorium and Veronicastrum. Um, I only did part of the border and then I got a bit nervous about removing things that had that looked so nice in May. So I did remove some of the lupins and then I worried that the border would look uninteresting in early summer. So Rosie, I really need your help. So should I rip everything out and start again? Um, as I said, I'm open to suggestions. I want these borders to look different from other parts of the garden. Um, I quite like the sort of prairie style look, the kind of Pierre Udolf kind of style. Um, we went to um, RHS Bridgewater and saw a lot of these plants growing and I really like the look of that. So other parts of the garden are kind of pinks and purples and yellows and things, but I would welcome an injection of perhaps a more vibrant color palette. So like burnt oranges and purples and all those kind of colors. So thank you, Rosie, and I really look forward to hearing your response. Bye for now. So I think that was um, quite a lot of questions for Rosie, but boy, does she come back with such clarity and um, has really crystallized in my mind what I need to do in this board. And I'm really quite excited to um, get on with it. So if you like what we do here on Murphy's Garden, this channel is all about just a journey of discovery. Never quite know where we're going to go next, but it's um, just lovely. And it's given me the opportunity to do things that I'd never would have thought I would have done. And I'm just really, really enjoying it and just excited for the next thing. So um, don't forget to like and subscribe because that all helps. If we can generate a bit of money from the channel, then it all helps putting it back into the garden. Um, and there's a buy me a coffee so if, uh, thank you for anyone that's done that that's really kind and I don't drink coffee I'm more of a flask of tea kind of a gal I don't like to waste money on buying coffee but um, any money that we make in the um, with the channel it just goes right back into the channel and we'll buy more perennials and more plants and things that we want to do to this part of the garden so anything like that's just to help the channel I really really appreciate it so Thank you very much for watching and join us in our next videos when, as we redesign this border as well as the many hundreds of other things we're doing in the garden. Bye for now.